We're on the east slope of the mountain. Right, right there. Evidently, the local superstitions don't bother you or your partners, Mr. Corrin. We're getting rich, Mr. Martin. That compensates for a lot of things. We're digging out enough gold to make each of us as wealthy as you'd ever want to be. There's Superstition Mountain dead ahead. Maybe you guys aren't worried about the old legend, but take a look down there. section of the hills? That's right. There's an area big enough for a landing. the other sacks, Carl. That's it. What were you guys doing while I went out on foot? Playing poker? We worked. Dug out ore. It was a little slow. There was only two of us. I'm looking around. There ought to be more. Oh, uh, here's a list I made of some supplies. I'd like to have you fly it in on your next trip. Can you manage all that? Well, we'll have to wait in after we get it, but I think it'll be all right. Okay. Now, you have the name of our bank. They'll handle the stuff and get it to the U.S. Mint. Yes, sir. And this check should cover your next couple trips. Fine, thank you. Well, we're all set. I don't like to fly out of these mountains at night. I think we'd better wait till morning. You said you'd make the round trip today. Take it easy, Ralph. We've got enough extra blankets for the boys. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get supper. Well, you mind if we uh, look around? Oh, go ahead. And if you find those sacks Ralph thinks are missing, why, well, let us know. Strange bunch of guys. I guess it's kind of hard to act normal with all that gold around. Yeah. What do you think about that Indian? You mean the Apache we saw on the way up? Oh, well, you know, this is supposed to be the sacred mountain the Apache God gave to his people for worship. That's only a legend, P.T. Yeah, but it's also the mountain where the secret mine's supposed to be hidden. You know, the lost Dutchman, La Mina Sombreros, whatever you want to call it. I know, and you think the Indians are supposed to guard it and they kill any white man that comes around. Yeah, there have been plenty of guys who haven't been heard from after they came up here to find the gold. Yeah, but this is pretty rugged country. They didn't have a copter to haul him in and out. Yeah, well, just the same, I don't like it. It gives me the creeps. Yeah. You better keep a sharp lookout on all rocks and bushes. Why? Might be an Indian behind one. <laughs> I'll take you down to the spring. You can wash up. I guess I shouldn't have sneaked up on you that way. What are you doing here? This area is sacred to the Apache Indians. 
I visit here often. You've been watching these men? Yes, for several days. You know, years ago, the Apaches were supposed to guard this mountain against the white man. You've heard the old stories. I can assure you, no Indians ever killed a white man for taking this gold. It was their greed that killed them. Yeah, well, I got a friend back at camp I wish you'd tell that to. Sorry I turned on you the way I did. Uh, forget it. I'm sorry I startled you. Good night. Good night. I think you'd better radio ahead. Get the bank to send an armored car to the field. Whatever you say, Mr. Landsberg, I'd like to get it off my hands as soon as possible. It's almost pure gold. You're carrying over $20,000 worth. Right, we'll take care of it. Right. I'd like to know. I saw your Indian friend last night. The one we saw? The one with the rifle? He's camped in the area. He was just curious about us. But the legend. Anyone who takes Apache gold from Superstition Mountain is supposed to get killed by the Apache guards. You can forget about it. They don't like white men on their sacred mountain, but they don't do anything about it. Well, I'm glad you didn't tell me about this last night. I couldn't have slept a wink. Funny thing. I slept better when I found out he was there. Say, Chuck, do you suppose we could go in and do a little prospecting? Well, let me go along. You'd have about one chance in a million of finding anything. Besides, you're forgetting the legend of Superstition Mountain, aren't you, P.D.? No, I'm not forgetting it, but all that gold's making it easier by the minute. Thanks, that's the correct amount. Let's get those supplies loaded. Boy, Chuck, aren't you going to help me? Be with you in a minute. I don't really know, just a feeling. You're not falling for that story about the Apaches, are you? No, but maybe P.T.'s worry is catching. Be back before dark. down at the spring crushing the ore and washing it. I don't see that Indian around either. You don't suppose that... No, I don't suppose. Come on. What happened? We couldn't find him this morning. Looked all over for him. He fell over the cliff. He knew that cliff was there. Sure he did. We all did. But that's where we found him, at the bottom of the cliff, 500 feet down. Went down at the burrow and brought him up. I don't think Carl fell over that cliff. Why? What do you think happened? He was pushed. He knew it was there, and it was a bright moon last night. There's just you and Mr. Corrin here. You accusing Corrin of murdering Landsberg? I'm just saying he didn't fall.
What do you think, Chuck? I don't know, I don't know. How about that Indian friend of yours? He was watching the camp the other night. Yeah, maybe he saw something. Or did something. Oh, now, don't be selfish. He didn't fall, you know. Uh, Mr. Corrin, I think we'd better radio the sheriff and tell him what happened. You fly the body out of here? The sheriff wants us to, we can. Okay. You get on the radio. I'll tell Emery. Give him the facts and ask him what he wants us to do. Right. Mr. Corrin? P.T.'s calling the sheriff now. We're gonna go right ahead with the work. Uh, did uh, Lanceburg have any relatives that should be notified? No, with him dead, the mine and all the gold we dug belongs to the two of us. You know, I don't think a guy goes walking at night in rocky country like this without shoes. Yeah. Well, I talked to the sheriff. He wants us to fly the body in. I told him we'd leave first thing in the morning. Good. Even if it weren't accidental, we don't have any proof. Well, that's not our problem. That's right. We're paid to haul gold out and fly supplies in. Did you tell the sheriff about how I feel Carl died? Nope. I just gave him the facts, as they seem to be. I don't blame Dale. It's just that there's so much at stake. He's in there now wiring the dynamite. He's our expert. He'll be out in a minute and fire the charge. Dale! I'm afraid he's dead. All the dynamite we had in here went off. How could it happen? I don't know. Maybe it's a dynamite cap. Maybe he dropped one or stepped on it. I don't know. He was the expert. Go smiggle, you eat a door or you wind up in a concrete kimono sucking mud from the bottom of the Hudson River. Sunday on KTZZ. All this guy has to do. to a donut that before Corrin came out of that mine, he shoved that switch to the fire position. He just hoped that Emery wouldn't notice it when he hooked up. Corrin has a perfect alibi. 
He was with us when the explosion went off. Yeah. I think we ought to call the sheriff again. We will. First thing in the morning. that you're in danger. What do you mean? The man in the tent, he's working with dynamite. He has wires and a clock. Wires and a clock? It could be a time bomb. Maybe I should tell the sheriff. Good. Start now. We'll meet you there sometime tomorrow. What's up? Come over to the bird and I'll tell you. You watch here. Stay on your toes. I'll be right back. What's wrong? What's happening? I'll tell you when I get back. friend Corn made a time bomb tonight. We've got to find it. On the copter? I'm not sure, but we can't take any chances. Well, how big will it be? Dynamite, wires, a clock. It'd be wrapped up or in a box about so big. Where'd you get this idea? My Indian friend came calling. It's funny he never comes around except when I'm asleep. You mean he actually saw Corn making this thing? That's right. Yeah, but a bomb. Why would Korn want to kill us? Well, for one thing, we'll be carrying both Landsberg and Emery. Yeah, if we went up like a firecracker, there'd be no witnesses, no bodies, no nothing. I'd never find what was left of us or the copter. That's a firing box. I put it there. I thought there might be a fingerprint on the switch. Oh. It's in here. Hand me the screwdriver. set to go off a half hour after we take off tomorrow. Come on. I'd like to shake that Indian's hand. You get your chance. He's going to meet us at the sheriff's office tomorrow.
That's that. Let's get rid of that thing. Oh, no. We're going to keep this contraption for evidence. Come on. This guy's armed. You're gonna take him? He's a murderer, Chuck. I think we ought to try to take him. Yeah, we can also play it safe. Fly out in the morning and let the sheriff come for him. I think maybe you're right. I'll raise the sheriff now. All right, hold it. Now get out. Put your hands up. Throw that 45 over here, Mr. Martin. Use your left hand. I couldn't sleep. Lucky for me that I couldn't. Now get over there. Keep your hands up. All right, hold it. They have found it. How? We couldn't sleep either. You've made it very difficult. Of course, you realize you'll have to have an accident. I can't let you get to the sheriff. Naturally. I've gone to a lot of trouble to reach this point. I can go to a little more. All right, let's get Carl and Dale aboard. It's getting light. To do. Probably try to blast us out of the air. It's all fixed again. All put together. Now get in and take off. Take your choice. It's not easy to explain bullet holes. Take off! This guy's a rise duck. That's our time to get him. Take off! Get some of their rope. About our contract with you, Mr. Corrin, you paid for just one more trip out. That'll be about enough to cover taking you into the sheriff. 